Colfax, Louisiana, the parish seat of Grant Parish, forms a predominantly African-American part of the Alexandria, Louisiana metropolitan area with a population of less than 2,000. Estimated 2016 median household income in Colfax reached $26,000 compared to $45,000 for the entire state of Louisiana. Could events in this community back in 1872 still affect life there almost a century and a half later? Does history have that much power over the lives of people not even born a century later? Hi, I'm Tom Army, and welcome to another edition of United States History Online. In the years following the Civil War, the Grant administration sincerely attempted to make our nation whole and homogeneous. They implemented the Congressional Plan for the Reconstruction of the South with some apparent early successes. Congress required former Confederate states to draft new state constitutions and promise to uphold the U.S. Constitution, especially accepting the newly ratified 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments. The Republicans made it their goal to rebuild the Southern economy in the image of Northern manufacturing and commerce. Now, during the election of 1872, Southern Republicans and moderate Democrats spoke of their hopes for the restoration of prosperity. Historian Richard White wrote, they, the reconstructed southern states, had accepted government intervention in the economy, aid to corporations, and the reality of black suffrage. The Panic of 1873, however, dashed those hopes. The disruption of credit made farm prices fall and unemployment soar. White supremacists linked their economic frustrations to their loathing of the new black voting rights and black involvement in local government. These whites wanted an opportunity to take back total control they had lost as the country focused on economic recovery for everyone. The mechanism they used to accomplish their objectives included obscene cruelty and violence, and it's difficult for us to fathom that today. Colfax, Louisiana sits on the Red River, 220 miles northwest of New Orleans. Founded in 1869, its settlers named this community after Shiler C. Colfax, the current vice president of the United States under President Grant. Colfax was the seat of government in Grant Parish. Counties in Louisiana were called parishes. In the weeks after the 1872 local election in Colfax, both Republican freedmen and white Democrats claimed to have won offices in the local government. A federal judge ruled that the Republicans be seated. On Easter Sunday, 1873, black freedmen holding offices in Colfax, hearing threats of an assault, rightly assumed physical control of the courthouse. The assault did occur. 140 whites attacked, heavily armed with rifles, ammunition, and one cannon. The Knights of the White Camellia and the Ku Klux Klan apparently organized the assault. After an exchange of fire, the freedmen ran out of ammunition and surrendered. The attackers lined up those who surrendered outside the courthouse and then called each freedman out of line 
by name. As they came forward, they were shot. Some had their throats slit. The remainder were hanged. 165 freedmen were either killed in the fight or executed. Three white men were killed in the attack. When news of the massacre reached Washington, President Grant declared martial law in Colfax. Federal soldiers eventually captured nine of the men responsible for the slaughter. Only three were convicted. The following year, white supremacists organized 8,000 men to march on New Orleans and overthrow the Republican government headed by Governor William Pitt Kellogg. Grant then sent six regiments of federal troops under the command of General Philip Sheridan to New Orleans to restore order. General Sheridan wanted to suspend habeas corpus. Grant said no. Grant told the leaders of the Republican Party that this nursing of monstrosities in Louisiana has nearly exhausted the life of the party. By 1875, Southern Republicans controlled only the state governments in Mississippi and South Carolina. Democrats in the other former Confederate states had regained control of state and local government. Also, the U.S. Supreme Court was about to strike a final blow to the Republican efforts to maintain black political activity and suffrage in the South. After the Colfax massacre of 165 freemen, as I mentioned before, only three men were charged and convicted of violating the Enforcement Act of 1870. The act was originally aimed at curbing Ku Klux Klan violence, and it forbade conspiracies to deny constitutional rights to any citizen. The defendants appealed their convictions on the grounds that there was not sufficient evidence to convict them. The Supreme Court agreed to hear their appeal. In the case of United States versus Crookshank, 1875, the Supreme Court sided with the defendant saying that the rights they were alleged to have violated were not enforceable in this case. The justices argued that the First Amendment, the right to assemble, the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms, were intended only to restrict the actions of the federal government and did not apply to the states or private citizens. In addition, the due process and equal protection clauses of the 14th Amendment only applied to state action and not the action of individuals. Therefore, freedmen would have to turn to the state for protection and not the federal government. For the next 90 years, no protection ever came. The events on Easter Sunday, 1873, in Colfax, Louisiana, effectively ended Southern Reconstruction. If you travel to Colfax, Louisiana someday, look for the historical marker placed there in 1950. It reads, Colfax Riot. On this site occurred the Colfax Riot in which three white men and 150 Negroes were slain. This event on April 13, 1873 marked the end of carpetbag misrule in the South. In addition to that marker, go into the town cemetery and find a 12-foot high obelisk. On the stone, you can also read, in loving remembrance, erected to the memory of the heroes, Stephen Decatur Parrish, James West Hadnut, Sidney Harris who fell in the Colfax riot.
fighting for white supremacy. April 13th, 1873.